tous en ira la banque. Bon. Suivi. Suivi. Scarf. Okay, so I know that videos discussing sensitivity have been made by many people in the past, and most of them say the same thing, which is that lower sensitivity is better. But if you are playing a faster paced game, then you might need to raise your sensitivity a little to keep up with the pace. But even then, the stability that lower sensitivity offers is well worth it. My current sensitivity, even in games like Quake, is 52 centimeters per 360, which is low. So personally, I have a bias towards low sensitivity, and that seems to be the general consensus amongst people on YouTube making these types of videos. But recently, there have been a lot of really good players that use rather high sensitivities, and I can't deny the advantages that high sensitivity offers. Better spatial awareness since you can more easily look around and check corners and angles, better mobility, and if you have good mouse control, then those two advantages on top of good aim can be extremely deadly. I can't deny that whenever I was trying higher sensitivities, it was really nice being able to turn on people. But here's the thing. I want to know why low and high sensitivities have the advantages that they do, past just saying that they do, like a lot of people do on YouTube. So how can I look deeper into the advantages in order to fully understand them? With math. I need another thousand. I admire your courage, Miss... Uh... Trench. Damn it. Before we get into the tests, we need to understand a few things along with a few assumptions that I'm making for this video. First of all, the average human reaction time is 250 milliseconds, and that's what I'm going to be using for this video that you'll see later on. The next thing to go over is that I don't have any fancy equipment to perfectly recreate the testing scenarios. So in order to create some consistencies, I'm going to perform each of these tests 10 times and then take the average from those results. And finally, I'm going to be comparing two sensitivities that I feel like show a good average of low, medium, and high sensitivities, which is 60, 40, and 20 centimeters per 360, respectively. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about the tests themselves. The first test is focused on the ability of a player to see a target and place a crosshair on that target without going past the target. For this, I'll be seeing how long the crosshair can stay on target in terms of centimeters. It should be no surprise that this relationship is linear since distance is directly related to sensitivity, but it does show how important mouse control is when using a higher sensitivity, which will be a reoccurring theme in this video. The next test is how fast you can reach your target. In order to show this, I'm not so concerned about stopping on the target, so I will be flicking past the target and counting the frames from when the flick starts until the reticle reaches the first pixel of the target while attempting to go the same speed in every single case. This is the instance where making the average of 10 attempts comes in handy to get a better result and I honestly wasn't expecting to get an exact linear relationship, but I managed to get it really close, which is a pleasant surprise and satisfying to me. These results, on the other hand, show the advantages of high sensitivities, 
by showing that your perceived reaction time is lower because you reach the target twice as fast than you would with the sensitivity that's half the speed. This is why players who use a really high sensitivity and have very good mouse control seem to have incredibly fast reaction times when in reality their reaction time is similar to other high-end players, but their ability to reach the target faster is what makes their perceived reaction time faster. For the next test, this is going to give yet another linear result. But I find it interesting because it's something that I don't think anybody has really considered when looking at sensitivity, and that is the force required to stop your mouse. For the singular test, we are going to assume a few things in order to make the testing easier and more consistent. First, we are going to assume that you are going to be reaching the target in the same amount of time, no matter your sensitivity. This means that the higher your sensitivity, the lower the required force because you don't have to move as fast to reach the target. This at first seems logical, but we will discuss how that's not always the case in the next test. The next assumption is that there is no friction on the mouse pad. This can be ignored because by adding the friction forces, all this will do is move the results on the graph up and down, but not actually change the differences or delta in the results between sensitivities, so it's okay to ignore this as a factor. The next assumption is that we will be using my mouse and its setup. I'm using the Razer Rochi V2 with a AAA battery inside, which is approximately 68 grams. This is important because force equals mass times acceleration, and using the mass of the mouse is, of course, the mass of the equation. And finally, we are going to assume that the time portion of the acceleration equation is 250 milliseconds because, as mentioned previously, that is the average reaction time of a human. I do know that the mouse doesn't go from a dead stop to the full speed in that short of a time period, but instead it goes in more of a curve, but it's something that happens so fast that I can't personally measure it with what I have, and this assumption is something that I'm comfortable enough making for the purposes of this video because in the end, it's just going to shift all the results up and down equally and not affect what the results are representing. In order to get a more consistent result and to have the velocity be constant, we are going to be taking the velocity from one of the previous tests to reach the target with a sensitivity of 60 centimeters per 360. That gives us a velocity of 0.462 meters per second. Then when you divide that by 250 milliseconds, that gives us an acceleration of 1.848 meters per second squared and a force of 120.12 gram meters per second squared. Now, because the only variable in this equation is the velocity, and we know that the velocity will change linearly with the sensitivity, we can go ahead and fill in the results for the other sensitivities. What this test shows is that high sensitivity has the advantage because it will take less force to not only get the mouse going, but to also stop the mouse, which creates a more consistent feel. But as I mentioned earlier, there is one flaw in this logic, and that's the assumption that it will take the same amount of time to reach the target no matter what sensitivity you are using. And this is actually false for most of the time. The reason for this is because when we see an enemy in a game pop up out of nowhere, we want to react quickly to them in order to get the first shot off. So when we move our mouse as fast as we reasonably can to the target, no matter the sensitivity, meaning that you are in reality using the same force no matter your sensitivity. So what does this mean? If you recall back to the first test where we were showing how long your reticle can stay on target, if you remember for the slowest sensitivity of 60 centimeters per 360, which is a very low sensitivity, the reticle only stayed on target that we were relatively close to for only one centimeter. So if your reticle lands perfectly in the center of the target and then you have a small chitter or something changes that you have to readjust to, you only have half a centimeter either way to go, which is an incredibly small amount of area. And keep in mind that that is the lowest sensitivity. It'll be a much less forgiving area with the higher sensitivities. 
we have to accept that we are humans and it is virtually impossible to apply the same exact force for stopping the mouse as the force you exerted for starting the mouse. This means that you will likely be stopping the mouse slightly too early or too late. Lower sensitivities are more forgiving for this than higher sensitivities are. This test, along with the first test, shows why people say that lower sensitivity feels more consistent because you not only have a higher chance of landing on your target, but you also have a higher chance of staying on your target after your reticle reaches its destination. So after all these tests, where does this land us in terms of what's better, higher or lower sensitivities? Hopefully it's rather clear that for the majority of people, lower sensitivities will be better. But of course, this does not mean that you need to have a sensitivity as low as mine, which is 52 centimeters per 360. But perhaps lowering your sensitivity from where it is now could help you if you are struggling with consistency in your aim. The only advantage that high sensitivities have is reaction time. But over a longer period of time with plenty of practice and muscle memory, your mouse control can become better and the disadvantages of a higher sensitivity can be mostly or nearly entirely negated. But that's assuming that you have the right traits and natural talent to reach that point. So yeah, that's pretty much the video. Please let me know what you thought of this kind of video because it's very different from what I've been doing in the past. I do know that I wasn't able to physically test these things as precisely as some of you may have wanted, but it's the best that I could do with what I have. I would be interested in seeing another channel with better resources do something along this line to see if their results represent the trend that I showed. But I do want to close saying that aim isn't everything and things such as game sense, general awareness, positioning and decision making are more important. Take for example Rafa from Quake who is known for having some of the weakest aim in the Quake Pro League but despite this, he is hands down the best Quake player in the league. Saying that, though, sometimes it's still handy being able to aim. 